This is the DJI Osmo Pocket 3, one year later. Recently, I borrowed the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 for testing and also took it to adventure to one of the Canary Islands. And I wanted to see how good this camera actually is. There is a lot of hype surrounding this and I know a lot of people love it, but I wanted to see it firsthand how good it actually can be. So it's been pretty much one year since the release of the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. I've been eyeing this camera for a little while, so I reached out to Megadrone which once again, provided me with a unit for testing and made this video possible. If you're interested in drones and cameras like this, check out the link down below for Mega Drone. So I took it on our two week adventure to one of the Canary Islands. I wanted to see how good a small camera like this can actually be in a real world situation. And coming from someone that uses a full frame Sony A7 IV with Tamron lenses, like a much bigger setup for my vlogs, I wanted to see how good this could be. And it actually turned out to be a savior because one of our cameras, the lens broke on it, so we only had one camera on our adventure. So Evie was actually filming a lot of her vlog on this device. And I did a little bit back and forth between this and the Sony 7 IV. I wanted to see how it would compare. So just going over the specs really quickly, this has a 1 inch sensor. So it's pretty big for a device that is literally able to be picked up and put into your pocket. Literally like the name suggests, it's a pocket camera, which is really nice. With 1 inch sensor, you can actually have a nice background blur if you put something really close. So if I had something in my hand, it would be a nice background blur because that 1 inch sensor is pretty big and especially for a device of this size. Also because of that, it's better for low light performance. With one inch sensor, you have a little bit more of low light capabilities than something smaller. And another benefit of this sensor, it can go up to 4K 120 frames per second. But in the normal mode, you're probably gonna shoot in 4K 60 frames per second or lower depending on what you want to do. Also, this sensor and this camera can record in 10 bit, which is really nice. But I'm gonna talk about that in a second. It is literally like a vlogger's dream. This is about a 20 millimeter focal length if you were to use a full frame camera like this. So it's definitely much wider than I'm used to. I'm using a 20 millimeter, which is by no means a good lens for vlogging, but it's just the way I make those. And this is super nice because a 20 millimeter, if you hold it like this, is definitely really wide for vlogging. So it's really nice to vlog and you know, you have everything behind you, you can see it, but it's still really close. So it's a nice kind of like two in one. You still have that nice vlogging, you know, background and everything. But if needed, you can actually digitally zoom times two in 4K mode. So you can actually have a little bit more zoom if you wanted to. And also the camera itself is on a gimbal on the top. So if we open the screen up, as you can see, it works right away with the gimbal. And that is really cool. We were able to get so many cool creative shots because the one inch sensor, while being a really nice sensor, it is also on a gimbal, meaning that you can do a little bit more motion, walk around, even run around, and still have really smooth looking footage because there is a gimbal on it. I kind of feel like it kind of reminds me of the gimbals that I see on the drones from DJI. So essentially it seems like they put the DJI drone camera with the gimbal on top of like this pocket, and now we have this. It is paired with a two inch flip screen. As you can see, it flips out. And thanks to this, you can just really quickly turn it on just by flipping the screen. It's a two inch screen. It's not too big, but it's big enough to see what you're recording and you can tell what is happening. You can use it as a touch screen to change all the different settings. It's definitely a nice screen, it's not too big, but also big enough to see what you're recording. And also, it's really cool that you can use it both vertically and horizontally, depending on what you want to shoot. So if you want to shoot vertical content, you can have it like this and have the screen in the vertical space. But if you wanted to, you can flip it and have it in horizontal. Next to this, you can record in both settings. Also, if you wanted to, you can also record it that way. So instead of holding it vertically, you can actually use it like this too. If you want it to be a little bit quicker, now we have the screen like this and the gimbal on the side. But that is depending on how you want to use it. If you're only shooting vertical content, I would probably just use the screen as it is that way. So it's a little bit easier to use and faster to set up. Like the name suggests, it is a pocket camera. Evie was able to just have it in her pockets and just at any moment she wanted to vlog or say something about that location we were at, well, she would just put it up, flip the screen and it was ready to vlog. Also, it's a really lightweight. It's only 179 grams. So literally, 
like the name suggests, is a pocket camera. Evie had it in her pockets, and thanks to this, she was able to record while traveling, having good quality videos, and it only weighs 179 grams, so it's really lightweight. It really is really lightweight. But at the same time, you have a one inch sensor, 4K, 120 frames per second if you wanted to, a gimbal on it, and a flip out screen. It's really cool and amazing for vlogging and that kind of videos. In terms of colors, you can record in normal, so it's gonna be straight from the camera. You can have the D Log M, which is a little bit more of a flat picture profile. And here comes the 10 bit. This goes for the D Log M and also the other flat picture profile, which is the HLG, which is the hybrid log gamma. It is actually the format that I use on my Sony cameras. I don't use the normal log or like the Sony logs, S logs, none of those. I actually use the hybrid log gamma since ever. And I've pretty much been using them on a daily basis. So this is really nice if you wanted to use hybrid log gamma or D log M, which I really like because D log M as all the different log formats from DJI, it's just so easy to use, so easy to play around with colors, but with 10-bit you can play around and not have to worry that it's gonna break the footage. But yes, this can record in D-Log M, meaning a flat picture profile, meaning you have more creativity in post-production. Also, it has 130 megabits per second in terms of the quality, so it's actually a really nice bit rate and you can definitely see that when you watch the videos from it. One thing I was curious about is how long a battery on this would be. Actually, it lasted us the whole day whenever we were using it. But I would say, from what I've seen and what I've seen online also, I would say about 150 minutes would be around how long this lasts when you're recording. Also, charge it really, really quickly. We used the USB cable from our phones, so we had the fastest possible charging for this, and we would literally have it full in about 30 minutes, a little bit slightly over 30 minutes, but it was super quick to charge. Overall, I can now actually say that I get the hype. I get the hype why so many people love this, especially for vlogging. There's just something so amazing about just flipping the screen and having a good quality camera in the palm of your hand, literally a tiny 180 gram camera in the pockets that can record in really high quality and you can even vlog on it and see yourself on the screen below. This is definitely a great piece of a device and I can definitely see how it's so popular for so many different content creators. While I usually aim to have the highest possible settings, I want to have the best quality, but also I'm based on a bigger camera. I'm based on a Sony a7 IV with the full frame sensor and bigger lenses. So I have a little bit more background blur and make those cinematic style of videos. But I can definitely see how this is amazing for vlogging. If you're not someone that is going to be going around and doing like all those close-ups of things, just wanted to have like a general vlogging camera, it's gonna be hard to beat this. As I feel like this is an incredible piece of device for anyone that wants to start vlogging, make vlogs, make those short videos and a very nice high quality video. And the files themselves are easy to work with. So this is definitely incredible for creators and those that want to make high quality videos with just a single small device. And one thing is we actually use this extra bit that you can connect to the bottom and we use it basically as an extended handle. We wanted to have a little bit bigger handle, now you have a little bit more on the bottom. So we use that part instead of for the tripod mode, we actually use it as a extra handle for it to make it a little bit longer. So if you're looking for a great vlogging camera, if you're looking for something that is really high quality, not too big, and just overall will check most of the boxes for most of the creators, well this is an amazing tool and it's definitely amazing for vlogging. This device was actually a nice surprise for both of us and we really enjoyed using it. It was definitely something fresh, new, and something I didn't think I would like as much as I did. Once again, Thank you to Megadrone for making this video possible. With that being said, that is gonna be the end of today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I hope you guys enjoyed this video once again, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>